Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over 9 Storage Wars moments that left the audience shocked. Number 9, Daryl Sheets' Holy Grail. Toys. Top of the line, the hard to get spawn toys. That right there is about another $400 box because it goes all the way to the Risky ventures are nothing new to Daryl Sheets. Sheets proved his luck when he struck gold did again by uncovering a storage unit that was stuffed to the brim with mint condition comic book memorabilia. The gambler's $2,700 investment was worth every penny. He struck what could only be termed as comic book heaven, the holy grail of toys, as it contained an endless supply of G.I. Joes, Hot Wheels, and a whole host of other collectible dolls, toys, and about 3,000 books, which Sheets valued at $10 apiece. The total kept rising to $90,000. Talk about gambler's luck. Here. So we've got about 3,000 books here. So if I just go 10 bucks a piece, it's $30,000 right there. This locker just goes on and on and on. And Number 8, Rene Nezoda's Video course. Game Find. You know why I'm so excited. I'm going to give you guys a little backstory. Where are you going? The camera's over here. Where are you, where are you going? Over here. Keep it right here. The first episode of Season 10 featured another huge payday, this time going to bidder Rene Nezoda, who landed the locker for a meager $1,500. Nezoda came across a seemingly endless collection of video games, video games, and even more video games. The collection filled up a large locker and it was clearly assembled by a collector who knew their stuff. Throughout the very long process of adding up the seemingly endless collection, it quickly became clear that this wasn't just a massive pile of surplus. With no duplicates in the mix, the dusty pile contained everything from rare Sega Genesis games to a copy of the NES game Bubble Bobble Part 2 that was worth several hundred dollars on its own. After the appraisal, the entire stash was valued at close to a whopping $66,000, earning Nezoda a small fortune. The storage unit we bought, and I also want to show you some more stuff we have. You can see I already have several videos up of the different video games we found. I'm trying to break it, man. Number 7. Rene's Antique These Jackpot. These are like English hunting scenes. Easily $300. Flower pots, $125. Bucks. Here's a $60 bill for you. Put it down there. Nice little decoration. After a bidding war with Dave Hester, Rene Nazota and his wife Casey managed to win another locker that netted them an immense profit. The couple discovered that the locker was chock full of incredibly valuable items that ranged from a grandfather clock in mint condition to a set of silverware that was easily worth at least two grand along with an oil canvas painting worth $8,000. More exotic pieces were found all valued at a minimum of $50,000. Rene has since claimed that it was the best purchase of his life. $100. This one is even nice that all the stuff is hand-painted. $200 on this one. Look at this piece. This is cool. This is $1,500 for the pair. Oh my god. Number 6. Barry's model Grand this Piano. Agent looking for precious artifacts. He's German. This guy's thoroughly gonna confuse everybody there. He's there right now. Spread. Barry Weiss, known as the collector, was a staple of the show during its early seasons. The retired antique collector was always entertaining to watch as he made his bids, took his chances, and often fell flat on his face. But every once in a while, Weiss would find something worthwhile, as was the case back in season one. In the episode, an oddball locker was opened up that seemed to be filled with nothing more than salon equipment. Apparently, dead set on opening up his own barbershop, Y snapped up the unit for $275. When he got inside, though, he was surprised to find a 1928 Marshall and Wendell piano valued between $10,000 and $12,000, netting Weiss a nice profit of $11,625. Okay, $1,600. Normally, I'd hold out for more. But I'm already up 650 on my German diversion locker. Right, me. Number five, Jared and Brandy's um, and we green ladies. And we bought a terrible ladies. locker. Hopefully, these naked ladies are worth some money. It looks like Frank art, um, 1927. These are actually highly collectible. It had not been a good day for Storage Wars power couple Brandy Passante and Jared Schultz. They thought they hit the jackpot when they purchased the locker for $2,750. But after taking a look at the contents, Jared instantly assumed they had made a big mistake. However, just when they were out of luck, they found a set of green naked lady bookends and lamps in a dresser drawer. The Arthur von Frankenberg mixed metal bookends and lamps ended up getting the couple another $2,900, bringing the locker's total worth about $3,840. Trying to see if they were that plug. No. That looks like something I made. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> a little electrical tape. Oh, Lord. Some wires hanging out. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Plug it in. Number four, Daryl's art collection. I was hitting it so big, it was like being an effing rock star. 
This unit was purchased way back in Season 3 by none other than Daryl Sheets. He spent a mere $3,600 on a locker that looked interesting, but not particularly special. Imagine the big shot's surprise when he discovered that it was home to a whole slew of paintings by Frank Gutierrez. When the proud new owner brought in an art expert to price the stash out, he was amazed to find out that the whole collection was worth upwards of $300,000. It remains one of the largest storage units finds on record. I was hitting it so big, it was like being an effing rock star. Number 3. Kevin's Shark Tooth I hope that's dino speak for megalobucks. So how old is this teeth? Uh, these are probably about 20 million years old. Kevin from Storage Wars Miami scored a major payday when he found a 20 million year old fossilized shark tooth in one of his units. The six and a half inch shark tooth belonged to a megalodon and much to Kevin's delight, netted him a Jurassic payday thanks to its size and condition. After evaluation, it was discovered that the shark tooth was worth $2,000. This proved to be among one of Kevin's most profitable. I would estimate this to be a $2,000 piece. $2,000? That's one Jurassic? Number 2. Mary's Candle Holder That's what I'm talking about! Today, this bull is a cash cow. This is a whole lot of Midway through Season 3 of the spin-off show Storage Wars Texas, Mary Padian stumbled into an interesting find over which she and her partner, Jenny Grumbles, got into a bit of a disagreement. The item in question was an antique candle maker, with Grumbles wanting to pop it on a shelf and sell it for 50 bucks. Padian wasn't about to accept that kind of petty cash. She took it to a candle shop where the seller appraised the little unit at an impressive $1,400 at the least. The best came at the end of the scene when the show's producers revealed to Jenny how much Padian had made from the candle maker. Awesomeness. Everybody knows that great things come in small packages. Um, hello? Number 1. Ricky and Bubba's Gold Check Gun. What do you think? Well, I can tell by the holster right now, it looks old. Look at that. That's very nice. It's a Colt 18. In the Storage Wars Texas episode, Raiders of the Lost Arcana, Ricky and Bubba were excited to have found an antique gold gun. Upon bringing the gun to an appraiser, the duo learned that it was a Colt 1849, dated back to the 1860s. The gun featured a faint engraving on the cylinder that depicted a Texas Ranger and Indian fight scene. The 150-year-old gun ended up being valued at about $25,000, thanks to its model and age. One little knock right here. It's 160 years old. Yeah, I hope yes. it has a few little <laughs> nicks. And There's a scene engraved on the cylinder. It's really faint. I, okay. I couldn't even see that. This and that's all for now. Stay tuned for more exciting content when we return. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe for more episodes.